Hey friends and welcome back to the seventh video of quadratic equation. If you remember in the previous video, we were solving a question that was x square plus 10x plus 2 is equal to 0. Unfortunately, we were not able to find the roots for the equation because uh, it had no roots. So in today's video, we will be solving the same question using the completing square method. But before we move on to the solution, let us first take a look at the steps of how to solve the using the completing square method. So there are four steps. The first step is that we have to make the coefficient of x square as one. And this is the most important step. If you have solved the whole question properly, but in the beginning you didn't make the coefficient as one, then you will get the wrong answer. So you have to be very careful that first of all, you make the coefficient of x square as one. Then comes the second step. In the second step, we use the formula, which is the base of this method, that is half into coefficient of x, the whole square. Now you have to uh, see this formula very carefully because many students make uh, uh, mistakes in this formula only. So the formula is half into coefficient of x, the whole square, and not half into coefficient of x to the power two. So this is a minute difference between these two formulas but uh, it's a very small error but when you use the wrong formula you will obviously get the wrong answer so you have to be very careful that you are using the proper formula and the proper formula is half into coefficient of f x the whole square the third step in the third step we will be substituting the value of half into coefficient of x the whole square whatever we value we get after solving this formula and the fourth step will be the normal simplification. So let us move ahead and solve the question. So the question is x square plus 10x plus 2 is equal to 0. So the first step is what? We have to make the coefficient of x square as 1. But over here, the coefficient of x is already 1. So we don't need to change anything. Now we will move on to the second step which involves the formula. So the formula is what? Half into coefficient of x, the whole square. Now the coefficient of x is what? The coefficient of x is 10. And hence we take 10. So half into 10, the whole square. And we can cancel 2 and 10, which gives us 5. So we have 5 square, which gives us 25. Now what we have to do is we have to substitute this value of 25 in the equation. But where will we substitute this uh, 25? That is the question. Now we want the presence of 25 in our equation, but we don't want to change the meaning of the equation. We can add 25, we can subtract 25, we can multiply, we can divide. But if you do any of these following, uh, you will uh, change the meaning of the question. That is, if I add 25, so the equation will become x squared plus 10x plus 27 which becomes uh, another equation. So in such a scenario, what we are supposed to do? So in such a scenario, what we have to do is we have to add the 25 as well as we have to subtract 25. So you are adding and subtracting. So 20 plus 25 and minus 25, which becomes zero. So you're getting the presence of 25 as well as the meaning of the equation is also not changing. <clears throat> Now comes the next most important thing that where to add 25 and where to subtract 25. Now you have to remember one thing that in this method, your equation is divided into two parts. One is the variables and the second is the constants. Variables are those which have letters in it and constants are only numbers. So the variable part will get the positive number and the constants will be getting the negative number. So let us see and solve. We have x square plus 10x plus 2. So it becomes x square plus 10x plus 25 plus 2 minus 25. So you can see that the variables are getting the positive number and the constants are getting the negative number. Now you, what you have to do is you have to see this term carefully. x square plus 10x plus 25. Now try to recall whether uh, you have seen a similar equation in the past or not. So I can tell you that this is the answer of a formula that you have learned in your previous standards. 
So uh, I don't know if you can recall, but you can just pause the video for a second and just try to recall. I can give you a hint that this formula belongs from your 8th standard. So in 8th standard, there was a chapter in which you had used the formula. So uh, if you can recall, it is very good. But if you cannot, then it's not a big deal. I'm showing you. So the formula is A plus B the whole square, which gives us A square plus 2AB plus B square. Now, if you were able to recall this formula, please let me know in the comment section. Apart from that, you might be thinking that why am I talking about this formula? So uh, the problem is that in this equation, we have x square plus 10x plus 25. And we want to convert it into the a plus b the whole square format. Now we know how to convert a plus b the whole square to a square plus 2ab plus b square. But we don't know how to convert a square plus 2ab plus b square into a plus b the whole square. Now, how will you convert this part into a plus b the whole square? So for that, we have a trick. And using that trick, you will be able to convert this part into a plus b the whole square easily. So what we have to do is we have to first take the first term. Now, the first term is what? a square. We have to take the square root of the first term. Now, the square root of a square is what? The square root of a square is a. So we get a. Then we take the sign from the second term that is plus. So we have a and plus. Then we take the last term that is b square. We take the square root of b square. Square root of b square is what? b. So we have a plus b and we add brackets on both sides and the whole square. So that is what we have a that is the square root of the first term, sine of the second term and the square root of the third term, third term the whole square. Similarly, we are going to do it over here. So the square root of the first term, sine of the second term and square root of the third term, the whole square. So what we get, x plus 5, the whole square. So this is the square root of first term, sine of second term and the square root of the last term. Now, if you want, you can expand this bracket and check whether the answer is correct or not. But if you're following this step uh, properly, then for sure you will get the correct answer. Next, what we have, we have 2 minus 25 and 2 minus 25 gives us what minus 23. But since we are writing x plus 5 in the terms of square, so we will be writing 23 also in terms of square. But we know that 23 is a prime number, so we cannot find any square root for 23. So we, were, we are just going to write root of 23, the whole square. Because root 23 into root 23 will give, give us root uh, will give us 23 itself. So we have seen this in the previous videos that root 2 into root 2 it gives us 2. So hence we will be writing root 23 the whole square. Now what we have we will be sending this root 23 to the right hand side. So it becomes positive. So we have x plus 5 the whole square which is equals to root of 20 root 23 the whole square. Now we will remove the squares because uh, we don't want the squares, we want to solve simple equations. So taking square roots on both sides. Now after we remove the square roots, we have x plus 5, which is equals to plus of minus root 23. Now why plus of plus or minus? Now whenever you have to remember this thing, that whenever you are taking the square roots of a number, now the number can be anything, it can be a decimal, it can be root, it can be normal integer. But if you're taking the square roots of a number, you have to add plus and minus. Why? Because we don't know whether that number is present uh, as a positive number or a negative number. And we cannot directly assume and decide whether the number is positive or negative. Hence we add uh, the sign which is called as plus or minus. So we will get two cases. One case will be with positive root 23 and the other case will be with negative root 23. So you have to remember this thing. If you don't do this, then your answer will go wrong. So let us move ahead. We have x plus 5 is equal to plus or minus root 23 and we will break it into two parts. One is, one is positive and one is negative. We have x plus 5 is equal to root 23 and x plus 5 is equal to minus root 23. So we send this 5 to the right hand side and it becomes minus 5 and we send this 5 to the right hand side and it becomes minus 5. 
Hence, we have x as root 23 minus 5 and x as minus root 23 minus 5. So, you can see that uh, using the computing square method, we were able to solve the equation, which was not solvable using the uh, factorization method. So, if you come across any such equations which are not solvable using any method, then you should try the other method also to see whether you are able to solve that question or not. So, from today's video, we will be adding one activity in this video. So, we will be having two MCQs. Uh, so, this is the first MCQ that uh, which one of the following is a quadratic equation and these are the four options and then the second MCQ is which one of the following is the quadratic equation, same question, different options. Now, what you all have to do is you have to solve these uh, two MCQs and let me know the answer of the MCQs in the comment section and in the next video, we will be solving the answer to these MCQs first. And then we will move ahead with our uh, question, uh, with our uh, portion that is completing square method. So that is it for today's video. I hope you understood the concept of completing square method. And if you all have any doubts, you can let me know in the comment section. And for more such videos, stay tuned and study with me.